The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media. Uh, that's a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we're joined by Yerika in the studio. Good morning, Yerika. Good morning. All right, so we do have uh, some buzzwords to get to, but besides the one that we alluded to earlier on the show, I, I think it's worth mentioning that a legend has passed away at the age of 83. That's right. Um, we're talking about the, the passing of the legendary artist uh, Tina Turner, mm. who passed away in her home near Zurich in <sighs> Switzerland. And her family uh, shared the news not too long ago. And uh, I mean, I, I was on my way here and I, I heard a song being played in my, you know, bus. Yeah. And uh, I heard the teen, uh, a Turner, Tina, Tina Turner song. Uh. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, my goodness, I haven't heard that song in a really long time. And, you know. And then, and then the story. I guess it was a tribute. It yeah. was a tribute. I mean, mm. the thing is, the list of her her best of the best. Yeah. I mean, she has albums dedicated to it. And, um, well, she's simply the best, just yes. like the song suggests. You know, her career spanned decades. She had a string of hits in the 60s and 70s. She made a dramatic comeback in the 80s. She mm. had a turbulent marriage with uh, her ex-husband, Ike Turner. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, yeah, may she rest in peace. May I'm really sad. I, me too. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a chance to watch the Broadway show mm-hmm. dedicated to Tina Turner, and yep. it, it was beautiful to see just her her best work staged. Yep. And you're right, we probably don't have time on the clock to mm. cover all her legacies, but may she rest yes. in peace. Let's take our attention to uh, another buzzword, making headlines mm-hmm. in, in cyberspace. I mean, the failure to launch, we've talked about on the headlines, uh, Nudi got postponed. Yes, that's right. And uh, so many people were disappointed. I mean, there were campers near the site. Yes, I mean, hundreds of visitors, you know, they, they had been waiting mm. in the scorching sun from early in the day mm. um, to watch the launch. And uh, they simply could not hide their disappointment <laughs> when the news of uh, postponement of launch was reported on a, a large screen at around 4 p.m. Mm. Uh, visitors, including families with children, like mm. you said, were seen camping out in tents mm. on Gohung Namyeol Beach, which uh, has a fabulous view. It overlooks the, the Naro Space Center. Yeah. Uh, they had gathered from all corners of Korea, even from Jeju-do Island. So it was a big occasion. Yes. Um, I mean, people had to set up in... <sighs> in advance in you know hours in advance yes. to get the prime spot so mm-hmm. you can only imagine the disappointment that's right if you've seen some of the interviews mm. i mean the kids look <laughs> distraught yeah and some of the kids was even seen crying as yeah. well yeah. yeah you can only imagine they're kids after all uh, as we mentioned with adam earlier the launch was postponed with only hours to go it was a technical glitch a software glitch at that as i was yeah. found during final preparation that's right so um over at uh you know, in the presidential office, a group of 50 students, uh, you know, age from elementary through high school, they'd been invited, they'd gathered mm. um, to watch the live broadcast together with the president, his aides and officials from the Korea Aerospace Research Institute. And after um, the launch was postponed, uh, they were taken on a tour <laughs> of the presidential office and other rooms where various events uh, and summits with foreign leaders are held. And, you know, the president seemed happy and eager to show the, these kids around and the kids seemed happy to be there. Yeah. And uh, when the president asked the kids if anyone wanted to hold a mock summit, uh, one very brave student raised our hand asking how he plans to respond if North Korea launches a missile strike. I've got to say it's a pretty simple but a sophisticated yes, question. That would not have been me. That would have not have been me either. <laughs> I think I want to blend more. Probably. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the president was quoted as saying, we must block it with a firm security cooperation posture between South Korea and the United States. <laughs> well, well said, President.
president. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, the, the postponement was a disappointment for the kids, but, mm. you know, they had a grand old time. All right. Mm. So, I mean, the postponement was a disappointment. Yes. But at least the kids got a tour of the and presidential And this office. is not the end. It's not. Mm. We'll have to wait and see what announcements are made this yep. morning and see if Nuri can launch sooner than yes. later. On to our second story. Now, ballet never gets enough spotlight ever. <laughs> <laughs> but Agreed. I'm pleasantly surprised to find that whenever there is a high-profiled uh, ballet company mm-hmm. or or Swan Lake, any Tchaikovsky, for yeah. example, tickets sell out. It's interesting, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, you say that ballet never gets as much attention as it deserves, but, you know, where are those tickets? Uh, yes. Where do they go? So, but, I mean, maybe it's supply and demand. I mean, they would add more shows yeah. if there were even True. more in demand. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a question of, I mean, it can ballet extend beyond that niche group of people who really, really love it, which is why these kinds of festivals seems to be necessary to maybe bring people a little bit closer to ballet and say it's not really that intimidating. It could be fun for anyone. Correct. <laughs> uh, for ballet fans out there, I have some great news. A series of ballet performances from classical ballet to new original works uh, inspired by Korean literature mm-hmm. and one even inspired by a hit Spanish TV drama series. No. Yeah, all of these are set to be staged throughout the month of June. Is that money heist by any chance? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. It is. How are they going to put that on? Actually, that's fascinating because yeah. if you think ballet is boring, uh, there are really dramatic productions. Money to heist might be it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So um, this is the, the 13th edition of the Ballet Festival Korea, and this year it's being held under the theme Face the Times in ballet. Mm -hmm. Um, It's set to showcase 11 productions Mm -hmm. by both established and emerging dancers at the Seoul Arts Center from June 8th through the 25th. The venue is also important and Seoul Arts Center is a good place to start, my friends. Yep. Uh, I cannot conceal my excitement, although I need to manage in knowing how these tickets go. <laughs> Can I, Erica, get my hands on the tickets? Well, um, you know, not all the performances because th- th- they've been sold out basically like the weeks opening before. Performance yes, one lake. for example. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, a growing number of new productions are being submitted for this festival every year. Mm. Uh, this year saw a total of 16 submissions and uh, it this is really positive news because the festival is serving as a platform for new emerging choreographers. Because believe it or not, there are many ballet companies throughout the country and uh, those who come to the country yeah. by invitation and they're eager to put on something new. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the production that will be staged as part of this year's festival. The yep. opening uh, <laughs> number always gets a lot of love. Yes, so the Universal Ballet is scheduled to perform the Swan Lake mm. at the Seoul Arts Center's Opera Theater for three days from June 9th. All the seats were sold out four weeks ahead of the scheduled performances. <laughs> but the good news is that that is not the only show to grace the stages during the ballet festival. Um, for example, let's talk about some of them. Okay. There are four productions scheduled to be performed at the CJ Tour Theater. Um, the Seoul Ballet Theater will present Clara Schumann over the course of two days from June 10th. So this particular piece, Clara Schumann, has been choreographed by James Chun, who is the honorary artistic director of the Seoul Ballet Theater. Mm. Uh, the piece depicts the life, music, and love of the Schumann couple and Johann Brahms. Mm. And the performance will be accompanied by a piano quartet. And 17 dancers will grace the stage. Um, there's another one. The first game... Uno, dos, tres, cuatro is a piece by Yun Jeon Il, Dance Emotion, uh, which is scheduled for June 10th and 11th. And this particular piece pays homage to the hit Spanish drama series, Money Heist. You can kind of imagine it, though, right? I yeah. mean, it's without dialogue. So they need to convey the entire rather complicated story of yes. Money Heist in a short time frame. It, could it be a fierce battle between male dancers <laughs> fighting over a big bag of money? Correct. <laughs> yes. Ten male dancers, in fact, fighting over a bag of money. You know, this is a dynamic performance. There's also a trampoline involved to facilitate these, uh, you know, super complicated aerial movements. That's apparently. so exciting. It's becoming less ballet and more yeah. circus ole. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, a special performance of Ballet Odyssey will also be held. Uh, this is from June 16th. 16th through the 17th, um, starting with court ballet of the 16th century. The show is going to follow the history of ah. ballet 
through the various periods, the Romantic, Classical, Neoclassical, and Contemporary periods. Mm. And uh, director Julia Moon from Universal Ballet Company is going to give a commentary on each of the periods yep. and each of the trends. Ballet with commentary is so easy. Yeah. They explain everything to you so you don't have to leave it to your imagination right. or Google it afterwards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that there are also six productions by emerging Korean choreographers. Yes, uh, those productions will be performed as a double bill at the Taiyu Theater. Mm. Uh, among them, there is uh, a piece called Curtain Call, Remember, and Sonagi. Mm. And uh, these three are being staged for the very first time. Mm. Now, uh, to go through them briefly, Curtain Call explores the decisions mm. that individuals make every day, okay. um, whether they're significant or trivial. And uh, dancers will apparently choose an instrument to express, you know, the movements and uh, the emotions okay. as well, which sounds interesting. Remember is based on this a true story of a couple who have been separated between North and South Korea. Mm-hmm. Uh, the premise of the story is that the husband is conscripted just seven months mm-hmm. after marriage and the couple briefly reunite mm-hmm. 65 years later during a cross-border reunion event. Ah, oh, the star crest lover story. Yeah. The story usually for ballet productions are simple because yep. there's no dialogue. That's but right. I mean, this is like, I can already imagine it. Yeah. It's gut-wrenching. That's right. Okay. And uh, uh, this particular particular performance, remember, it will be accompanied by the hegem, mm. a Korean stringed instrument, mm. um, which sort of lends a traditional vibe. Mm. And uh, a pansuri singer will also <sighs> accompany, uh, you know, these dancers on the stage. Okay, so maybe there's a little bit of dialogue. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, pansuri is all, you know, it's spoken, right? Right, yeah. right, right. So a little bit of explanation yes. and storytelling. So the 13th edition of Ballet Festival Korea kicks off on June 8th. That's right. I do have to get to this story. We'll we'll skip the song. Yeah, we'll skip the song. <laughs> because, I mean, it's kind of mind-boggling. The man got away with it for almost three decades, mm. practicing medicine without a proper license. Yeah, you know, you know there, there are all sorts of scammers, scammers out there. Yeah. You know, um, but this particular man has been basically playing doctor for almost three decades. Uh, He's currently in his 60s and he was recently sentenced to seven years in jail, which I think is a very short time for... You know what he did, which is illegally practicing medicine and for 27 years. And if you can imagine years. the repercussions if things yes. have gone wrong, he's uh, playing with people's lives basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, he had practiced in more than 60 different hospitals with a forged license. So there are other people involved who hired him. You know, 60 different hospitals. Yes, um, the man treated patients and prescribed medicine at general hospitals and orthopedics clinics from. October 2014th to last December, so until very recently. Okay. Uh, with a counterfeit medical license um, from which he made a lot of money, over 527 million won. Okay, so let's talk about this fake doctor. Does he even have a medical background? Any training? Yeah, you know what? The man graduated from medical school in 1993, okay. but he did not obtain a license to practice. Um, he began working as a doctor in 1995 using forged documents. Now, in relation to the case, direct Directors of eight general and private hospitals have also been uh, prosecuted in violation Mm. of the control of public health crimes for hiring without appropriately screening the man's medical license, as well as letting him work without proper registration. Okay, so of course this raises a more fundamental question. Why was his fraud overlooked for decades? Yeah, because uh, medical licenses here in Korea are issued by the Ministry of Health and Welfare, which makes it difficult to cross-check with organizations such as the Korean Medical Association. (sighs) Also, there's the common practice of hiring doctors on short-term contracts without a proper registration process. Mm. And uh, many say maybe that is what helped the man land his jobs over the years. Okay, thankfully, I mean, there weren't any devastating stories Mm. that are linked to this man practicing medicine without a proper Mm -hmm. license. And it certainly raises a red flag as to where the system fails us, right? And uh, his case was handed to the prosecutors last November. All right. Yeah, there you have it. Thank you very much, Erica. Pleasure. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.